an orthopedic hospital act federal orthopedic hospitals act amendment bill 2024 sb 6384 reading taken the senate leader Thank you, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues. The first order of the day is a motion standing in my name on the rescission of Senate decision. Mr. President, with your permission, I wish to move the motion. You can go ahead. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, rescission motion on Senate decision. The Senate recalls its debate on Wednesday, third day of July 2024, on a motion captioned urgent need to investigate the continued importation of hazardous petroleum products and dumping of substandard diesel into Nigeria moved by most distinguished Senator Asuko Ekpeyong, representing Cross River North. The Senate recalls also its resolution on Thursday, 11 July 2024, to recaption the title of the Ad Hoc Committee to Ad Hoc Committee to Investigate Alleged Economic Sabotage in the Nigerian Petroleum Industry. The Senate notes that the House of Representatives debated on the same matter and also constituted an ad hoc committee to investigate it and the Senate equally observes that there is need for the ad hoc committee for the ad hoc committees of the two chambers to work jointly to avoid duplication and clash in the discharge of their assignment. Accordingly, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, Senate resolves to, one, recaption the title of the ad hoc committee to National Assembly Joint Ad Hoc Committee to investigate alleged economic sabotage in the Nigerian petroleum industry. Two, communicate the decision, of, the decision to the House of Representatives for a composition of equal number. Three, that the members of the ad hoc committee in the Senate remain as follows. One, Senator Bamidele Michael Okoyemi as chairman. Two, Senator Ekpeyong Asuko, a member. Senator Abdullahi Yahaya Abubakar, member. Senator Mongono Mohamed Tahir, member. Senator Olamile Abiola Solomon, member. Senator Plank Iket Tatsu, member. Senator Banigo Ikwalibo Hari, member. Senator Kabib Mustafa, member. Senator Osho Mole Adam Saleu, member. Senator Willens Eten Jonah, member. Senator Abiru Mikhail Adetokumbo, member. Senator Izunaso Osita Bonaventure, member. Senator Yao. Sahabi Al Haji, member. Senator Ahmed Abdul Ningi, member. Senator Suleiman A. Kau, member. The Senate equally resolved that the resolution of the Senate be communicated to the House of Representatives, following which the joint action ad hoc committee will be inaugurated by the presiding officers of both chambers. I so move, Mr. President. Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi, could you please second the motion? Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Senator Abdul Ningi, oh. representing Bauchi Central of Bauchi State. I move that this motion is seconded. I was uh, heavily moved by the Senate leader. I so move. Well, I think there's no point to debate this uh, matter. We we'll just go straight to the uh, recommendations. Well, something that has been debated, something that has been uh, uh, quietly, you know, uh, fully debated. So we just go straight to the recommendations. Uh, those, okay, recaption, recommendation one. 
recaption the title to National Assembly Joint Ad Hoc Committee to investigate alleged economic sabotage in the Nigerian petroleum industry. Those in favor of this recommendation or this prayer say aye. Those against say nay, the eyes have it. Communicate the decision to the House of Representatives for a composition of equal number. Those in favor of this recommendation, please say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Recommendation uh, prayer three, that the members of the Allo Committee in the Senate remain as follows. It's as depicted on your other paper. I don't need to read them again because he has read them. Those in favor of this prayer, please say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. That the resolution of the Senate be communicated to the House of Representatives, following which the joint, the joint ad hoc committee will be inaugurated by the presiding officers of both chambers. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Thank you um, very much, the Senate leader, for having the foresight to uh, configure the entire uh, structure to deal with this matter so that we can have efficient investigation in respect to uh, what uh, is expected to be done uh, or as requested uh, or within the mandate given to you as members of the committee. This is well thought out and uh, we commend you for your, your foresight. Uh, always, you are always uh, doing on anything that uh, you are assigned to do. Uh, thank you very much. Senate Leader. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, the second order of the day is the second reading of the Federal Universities of Technology Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 570. Distinguished Senators will recall that the bill was read for the first time in this chamber on Wednesday, 2nd October 2024. Mr. President, you may wish to invite most distinguished Senator Uwoko Ned Munir to move the motion for the bill to be read a second time. Uh, may I call on uh, distinguished barrister Alaji <laughs> Munir Ned Uwoko to move the motion for the second reading of his bill. Thank you, Mr. President, for all the accolades. Mm -hmm all the recognitions. I, Mr. President and my distinguished colleagues, this is the lead debate on a bill for an act to upgrade the Federal College of Education Technical, ASABA, to the Federal University of Technology, ASABA, SB 570. You, you need I, to move, you, know, you move the motion. You yes, sir. It may not be a second, just move the motion first. Yes, um, Mr. President, this is a motion that I'm reading. I rise today to lead the debate. Sorry. So I move the motion. Yes. Move. It may not, it may yes, not be a second. I, lead, I know it's a second. I lead, lead the debate, uh, Mr. President, on a bill to upgrade the. So I move the motion for. You may proceed. No need for a second. Yes. We proceed. <laughs> I move the motion, Mr. President, um, to lead the debate. Um, for an act to upgrade the Federal College of Education, ASABA, for the Federal University of Technology, SB 570. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I rise to lead the debate uh, for a bill to, for an act to amend the Federal Universities of Technology Act, CAP F23, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, to provide for the upgrade of the Federal College of Education Technical Asaba to the Federal University of Technology Asaba and for related matters. This bill passed its first reading in this hallowed chamber on Wednesday, 2nd October 2024. And today I'm honored to present its detailed justifications. This bill seeks to achieve a significant milestone in Nigeria's education sector by upgrading the Federal 
College of Education, Technical, etc. This has led to the status of a federal university of technology. This is not merely a change in designation, it is a strategic and transformative step towards advancing technological education, research, and innovation in our nation. Mr. President, respected colleagues, Nigeria's growth and development in the 21st century hinges upon our ability to cultivate innovation, advance technology, and generate new knowledge. Our institutions of higher learning are crucial in shaping our future, especially through the production of a cutting edge research and development in the technology sector. However, the current number of federal universities of technology in Nigeria does not adequately meet the growing demand for comprehensive technological education. The existing Federal University of Technology in Akure, Mina, Owere, Bauchi, and Yola have made commendable contributions to our national development. However, the South-South geopolitical zone of Nigeria remains without a dedicated Federal University of Technology. This bill seeks to rectify that gap by upgrading the Federal College of Education, Technical, as ever, an institution which with a rich history and proven foundation in technical education to the Federal University of Technology, Asaba. Distinguished colleagues, the Federal College of Education Technical, Asaba, was established in 1987 with a core mandate to train educators who will impart technical and scientific skills to future generations. Over the past three decades, this institution has built a strong reputation for excellence in technical education, producing highly skilled teachers who have contributed meaningfully to Nigeria's education sector. However, as a college of education, its current capacity to meet Nigeria's pressing needs in technological advancement remains limited. The institution has contributed significantly to the development of skilled manpower in technical and vocational education. The teachers and professionals it has trained are crucial to addressing our current technological challenges. However, limiting the institution to the status of a college curtails its potential to full deeper scientific research and innovation that the University of Technology could achieve. This bill, therefore, does not propose establishing a new institution from the ground up. Instead, it seeks to unlock and expand the significant potential of the Federal College of Education Technical, ASABA, by upgrading it to the Federal University of Technology. With a fully developed campus, a current population of over 10,000 students, and more than 1,000 staff members, this transformation can be achieved without financial implications. This upgrade will meet the growing demand for technological education, not only in Delta State and South South region, but across the entire country. The city of Asaba, as the capital of Delta State, sits strategically at the heart of the South South region. Delta State has long been an industrial hub with substantial activities in oil, gas, and emerging technological fields. Asaba's proximity to other centers, including Onitsha and Port Harcourt, makes it an ideal location for a federal university of technology that can serve the needs of both local and national industries. The upgrade will also help the institution meet the growing demand for higher education in science and technology within the South South region particularly as local industries in agriculture, manufacturing, and other sectors continue to expand. Mr. President, my colleagues, these industries require a highly skilled workforce trained in science, engineering, technology, and the University of Technology, ASABA, will be well equipped to produce this talent. This proposed transformation comes at a crucial moment. Nigeria stands at a crossroads where the advancement of a technology-driven economy is no longer optional but a necessity. The federal government's renewed emphasis 
on digitization, innovation, and knowledge-driven industries underscores the importance of strengthening our institutions of higher learning, especially in technology fields. Furthermore, this bill, this bill aligns with our national objectives. As a country, we have committed to diversifying our economy and reducing reliance on oil revenues. We recognize the need for a robust technology-driven workforce and establishing the Federal University of Technology, ASAVA, will be instrumental in realizing these ambitions. The institution will serve as a center for research and development, equipping students with practical skills in fields like engineering, information technology, environmental sciences, and renewable energy. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the timing for this upgrade could not be more fitting. The infrastructure exists. The students and communities are eager. Data state is ready. All that is required is our political will to make this vision a reality by upgrading the Federal College of Education Technical Asaba to a Federal University of Technology Asaba. We signal our commitment to the future of our youth, the development of our region, and the technological progress of our nation. This bill is not just a proposal on paper. It represents a strategic investment in our people, in our communities, and in Nigeria's future. I urge you all to lend your support for this bill and join me in ensuring that the Federal University of Technology, Asaba, becomes a reality. Thank you, Mr. President, and colleagues. I so moved. Um, Senator Jewel, we have the floor, then Senator Tony will uh, they convene your neighbor in Delta. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, my name is Senator Jewel Onuabo Thomas. I represent the good people of Delta South Central District. I'm here support the motion, the bill being presented by my own brother, Senator Ned Woku. Mr. President, I want to seek your permission to make a brief comment after supporting this uh, bill. Mr. President, I want to say that Technology is the bedrock of economic development. And I also want to say that the need to make technology or technological education accessible to our teeming young generation is also very important. Thirdly, it is also time to create a strong culture of technological dependence for our young graduates to make them self-sufficient and be able to do things for themselves. Therefore, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I think the need to upgrade that school to the University of Technology in Asaba is very, very important. Like my colleague I just stated, if you look at Delta North and that has it, we don't have any federal university of technology. Therefore, I want to appeal to my colleagues, my distinguished colleagues, support this bill for the upgrade of this federal college, federal university of technology. As you have stated, the financial implications are minimal because there is already an existing institution in that place, which is functional. All we need, the Establishment Act, a little touch, make it a universal of technology. Thank you, Mr. President, for the opportunity. Oh, Senator Tony. Thank you, my president, distinguished colleagues. My name is Dr. Tony Mwe, representing Anambra North Central District. I want to make very brief uh, comments 
and no input as it concerns my support for this uh, all important uh, uh, bill which Senator Ned Moko has given all the synopsis of the on his lead debate. Mr. President, the need for establishment of this University of Federal University of uh, Technology in Asaba by coming as an upgrade on the existing Federal University of uh, uh, Federal College of Technology Asaba cannot be emphasized. Mr. President, you have to agree with me, or I want you to agree with me with my other colleagues that that branch of education has to do with STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's very <laughs> broad. It has broad implications in our national policy, in our technological advancements, and many things we are doing in this country. It, it, it encapsulates many areas, many facets of our national growth. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, while well, I feel that there's a need for this Senate to support this bill for second reading that establishing this university or upgrading the existing collaboration to Federal University of Technology in Asaba will help many, not only South South, even Southeast. This is our nature. This is Asaba. This is our nature. This is Oka. There's a Federal University of Technology in the East. That is Owere, which is a little bit far from Anambra. This is Enugu. This is Abia. It will have a wide implication. It will help our people, it will help Nigeria, and you also have to train our will be engineers, will be technolo technologists and other things. And it has little or minimal, little minimal, let me use the word minimal, not minimal financial implication of the federal government. I joined my two other colleagues who have already spoken to support that this bill should be read the second time. Thank you and God bless you. Last resort, the least Central Patrick on the base. Because it's something that uh, we always deal with here. You know, bills for upgrading of universities, as well as universities, is something that we do with here or every day. So I think uh, uh, when you make your contribution, we can now go to the prayers. Uh, Central Party and DBC. Mr. President, thank you very much. And thank you, my fellow colleagues. My name is Senator Patrick Sain Dubeze, fellow of Nigerian Society of Engineers. Uh, Mr. President, I want us to underline certain things in this chamber. When it comes to do with education, educating our youths is a very, very of a very, very high priority. And when we are talking of technological advancement, then we should educate our younger ones and channel them towards technology and sciences. Um, I feel that in Nigeria, we have not paid enough attention to science, innovation, and technology. If we see the way we promote other facets of our life in terms of education and patronage, look at us. You realize that we need to do much more very much more to pay proper attention to technology. And in doing so, this particular bill wouldn't have come at no other time than now, except it had come earlier. So I'm on my feet, giving my total support and urging every member of this Senate that we should give attention to technology, innovation, sciences. And as such, in doing that, we should promote and project everything we can do that will channel our youths and upcoming ones towards that. And how do we do it? It's by supporting this bill that is passed with the speed of life. As we used to say here that this institution be established. And once it's done, a lot of our youths that side of uh, Nigeria are very much inclined to use their fingers. And I believe that establishing this institution, which will cost us less because the infrastructures are already there, and uh, 
it has administration existing to be upgraded means that this will go a long way to help this country, especially in our economy. I so submit. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished senators, for your contributions. Um, now, on this note, um, um, put the question that those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, please say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. The clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, a bill for an act to amend the Federal Universities of Technology Act, CAP F23, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, to provide for the upgrade of the Federal College of Education, Technical Asaba, to the Federal University of Technology Asaba, and for related matters, 2024, SB 570, second reading. A bill for an act to amend the Federal Universities of Technology Act Cups F23, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, to provide for the upgrade of the Federal College of Education Technical Asaba, to the Federal University of Technology Asaba, and for related matters 2024, second reading taken. This bill is referred to the Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Telephone and to report back within four weeks. Let me commend Senator Manero Ed Unwoko for initiating and for sponsoring this bill and also commend those who contributed in the debate. It's a fact that we need to educate our young ones uh, in the area of technology. And this cannot be done without schools such as these. Uh, when you look at what is happening elsewhere, like University of America, you have several thousands of universities. Uh, even though the population does not uh, double our own, yet we have just about 200 universities in this country. So the more the merrier. Even though there are bills every day for the establishment and upgrading of uh, institutions to universities, but I uh, wouldn't say there are so much or there are so many. I, I have the inclination, I support those that have the views that we should continue to establish more universities until they're able to take care of the educational needs of our people, of our young ones. Uh, it's on this note that I commend, I want to emphasize my comment that Senator Manungoku has done very well by bringing forward this uh, bill. And uh, we hope that uh, at the end of the day to be assisted to by Mr. President, so that this very important institution will be established in the historic city of Asaba, uh, Delta State, the capital of Delta State. Uh, thank you for your contribution. Leader of the Senate. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the third order of the day is the second reading of the Chartered Institute of Petroleum and Gas Engineers of Nigeria Establishment Bill 2024 SB 359. Distinguished senators will recall that the bill was read for the first time in this hallowed chamber on Thursday, 22nd February 2024. Mr. President, we may wish to invite most distinguished Senator Jonah Williams Etten to move the motion for the bill to be read a second time. Former Speaker across River State of Assembly and Chairman Senate Committee on uh, Petroleum Upstream, Senator Etten William, you have the floor. You can the floor is laid to you to move your motion for the second reading of your bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to lead the debate on the bill for an act to establish the Chartered Institute of Petroleum and Gas Engineer of Nigeria 2024, SB 
Now, Mr. President, distinguished colleague, it is with utmost pleasure that I rise to lead the debate on the general principle of the bill for an act to establish the Chartered Institute of Petroleum and Gas Engineers of Nigeria and for related matters. This bill was read for the first time in these hallowed chambers on Thursday, 22nd February, 2024. The bill seeks to provide for the establishment of the Chartered Institute of Petroleum and Gas Engineers of Nigeria to act as a professional body to regulate, control, and determine the standard of knowledge to be attained by those seeking to become chartered petroleum and gas engineers. Justification for the bill. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, this bill is crucial as it aims to address the growing need for professionals, recognition, and regulations in the petroleum and gas engineering sector. In view of its peculiarity and strategic relevance to the social economic development of this country, you will agree with me, my dear colleagues, that Nigeria is one of the leading oil and gas producing countries in Africa. Yet there is no dedicated professional body to regulate the practice of petroleum and gas engineering. And this has led to the very concern about the quality of engineers working in this field with adverse implication on the safety and efficiency of the industry. Accordingly, the establishment of the proposed the Chartered Institute will ensure that only qualified and competent individuals are allowed to practice in this field. And this will no doubt set standards for education, training, and professional practice, as well as provide a platform for continual professional development and accreditation. Furthermore, the proposed institute will help to provide research and innovation in the petroleum and gas engineering sector, leading to advancement in technology and sustainability. It will also provide a forum for networking and collaboration among professionals, thereby fostering a culture of excellence and best practice in the industry. Objective of the bill, Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, the objective of this bill, among others, are to determine what standard of knowledge and skills to be attained by persons seeking to become members of the petroleum and gas engineering profession and raise those standards as circumstances may permit. B, secure the establishment and maintenance of the register of fellows, associates, and registered petroleum and gas engineers entitled to practice as petroleum and gas engineers and the publication of list of those persons. C, conduct examination leading to the award of professional competence certificates as may be practiced by the Institute and in conformity with international best practice, et cetera. The bill. The bill is divided into parts. Part one deals with the qualification and membership categories. Part two deals with the qualification and tenure of office of members of the council, while part three deals with the supplementary provisions relating to the discipline, disciplinary tribunals and investigating panel. In conclusion, sir, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the submission of the Chartered Institute of Petroleum and Gas Engineers of Nigeria will enhance professionalism and competence of petroleum and gas engineers in Nigeria, as well as promote sustainable development in oil and gas industry. On this note, I appeal to all distinguished senators to collectively support the second reading of this bill in order to set the stage for its expeditious passage for the benefit of our country. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, this bill has no financial implication as the Institute will rely on subscriptions from its members for their operation. Thank you very much. Thank you, distinguished Senator Ndube. Thank you, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues. My name is Senator Ali Ndume, representing Borno South. I stand to contribute this very important bill as presented. I'm not an engineer, but I was thinking that we have an institute like this. So that means this is an institution that is long overdue, especially 
when the profession needs specialization, a sector like petroleum and gas engineering needs specialists to improve the quality of delivery service. Here before the Senate, we have cases already of adulterated petrol being imported, people claiming to be what they are not. So it's important to have an institution where we have a record and then training and then uh, some ethical standards set. Therefore, and most of, uh, importantly, as the sponsor of the bill said, Mr. Speaker, said, former Speaker, that there's no financial implication. It is only uh, as expected of the Senate or National Assembly by extension to always provide conducive, good environment for operations. I therefore urge, as he pleaded, that we should support this bill and allow it to be read the third time. Thank you. Distinguished Senator Dafinone. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, Ide Dafinone, representing the good people of Delta Central. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I'm an accountant and always very happy to support a bill with zero financial implications. But more importantly, the importance of the oil and gas sector to the Nigerian economy should mean that a body such as this is very, very overdue. We need standards to protect the industry and to grow the industry. We need also to have professionals that can meet up with international standards. And I know that this Chartered Institute will do just that. So I'm particularly happy to support my colleague, Senator Eteng Williams, to move this bill forward to the next stage. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Omer. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. My name is uh, Senator Victor Ume, OFR. I represent Anambra Central Senatorial District. Mr. President, I rise to support this bill for the establishment of uh, Petroleum and Gas Engineers Institute in Nigeria. Aware that there is an institute, Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Korean. Um, that institution is so large to regulate all aspects of engineering in Nigeria. So there is need to have another institute that to regulate specialized areas like this petroleum sector, petroleum and gas engineers, should be able to come together to be able to regulate its activities. Since the petroleum industry in Nigeria is, um, is a life wire in our economic activities in this country, it is therefore good that we have a special institute that will document, regulate, and uh, ensure that engineers that are trained to work in our petroleum sector, petroleum industry, shall have their own institutes. Because um, if we leave all activities of engineering to be regulated by current Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, it's going to be a very large body. And this institute will now provide for the special needs of this sector. And uh, it is very critical, Mr. President, 
our oil industry needs to be taken over by Nigerian professionals if we hope to break away from the, the uh, activities of people from outside who are playing very key roles, both in our exploratory activities, oil exploration, and uh, other aspects of uh, uh, oil production. So a dedicated institute like this will be able to get our people together and expose them to best practices globally. And they will be channeled to taking up these positions in our oil industry. So I support um, this bill with um, every amount of patriotism, knowing that if an organization is too large, sometimes it will not be able to meet the particular needs of this um, industry. So on this note, I support um, Senator Ten Williams in this bill, the chairman of our committee, Petroleum Resources Upstream, and we know what we'll see there. We we'll need to have our core professionals uh, organized and put together under this institute so that we shall be able, we shall be able to make the necessary impact in the oil exploration uh, sector uh, of our economy. Thank you very much, Mr. President. This is Senator Lalong. Mr. President, I'm Samuel Lalong too, representing Plateau South. And I stand to also support this bill. As a president of recent, we are already talking about the influx of quacks into very essential uh, industries in Nigeria. We are now talking about training people and also encouraging the younger ones to be trained before they get into professions like this. So I have no doubt that this bill will go a long way, especially coming from my good friend, member of my association to former speakers, former speakers association. So Mr. President, I also stand to support the bill. Senator Karibi, and then we run off. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is uh, Karim Dondeski. I represent the people of Kogi West. Mr. President, I am not against this bill, and I cannot be against any bill brought by my chairman and my friend. But the activities of this council from onset has to be spread out. They have to be spread out because we have current, which is the Council for Registering Engineers in this country. Either you are civil, mechanical, electrical, oil and gas engineers, you have to register by current. So this institute will only be concerned, I believe, with the regulation of uh, petroleum and oil and gas engineers, that is those that are in that activity, to regulate their work, to regulate their practice. But the issue of registering engineers in oil and gas is, must still be under current. That has to be spelled out when we go into um, public hearing before this uh, is put in place. We have to still be registered by current. That is the only area I want us to know. 
this the Zimish colleagues, uh, this uh, issue looks very straightforward. And uh, yes, some have spoken for and some have spoken against. Uh, but my personal opinion is that uh, if the bill is allowed to go for a second reading, they can go and streamline the current, like uh, Senator Karimi pointed out, Council of Registered Engineers. Gas engineers are engineers. Petroleum engineers are engineers. Uh, you know, mining engineers are engineers, but I don't know. Well, and then this is even a chartered, chartered institute. Maybe you will help them, but they also have an institute of petroleum engineers. They have an institute of petroleum engineers. You are aware of that? They have an institute of petroleum engineers. Don't they have? Uh, uh, Senator Andrew Bezier, don't you have a... Uh, uh, Institute of Petroleum Engineers, uh, Institute of Engineers of Nigeria. Okay. So, um, Mr. President, well, we have institution of various arms or branches of engineering. We have institution of civil engineers, we have institution of highway and transportation engineers, and so on and so forth. But the institutions are not the ones that register engineers only but Korean. They only do what? Re uh, regulate and restrict people to practice within their own field of study. And if you want to veer, you have to go and sit exam in that branch of that branch and become a uh, member of that institution. That's the essence of all those. The registering as, institution of, uh, as a member of the Institution of Civil Engineers doesn't make you an engineer if you are not registered with current. I'm a, a fellow of Nigerian Institute of Civil Engineers. I'm a fellow of Nigerian Institute of So how would this complement foreign? Okay. This institution, uh, if established, where there is no, where it's not existing already, if established, it will only regulate and restrict people who are not in that field from coming to practice and answering that they are petroleum or gas engineers. It I mean before you can bear that title, you have to register with the institution. Not only because you are registered with a uh, current, you have to register with that institution that you are a member of that institution, that you are qualified. You have this certificate to practice as a member of. Um, so you pay levies to current? Yeah. And you pay levies to this institute? I pay to uh, NIS, and uh, uh, Institution of Civil Engineers, I pay to. Institution of Highway and Transportation Engineers, I pay for all this. Once you belong, you have to pay. So that is only to uh, revalidate your certificates annually. Well, distinguished colleagues, let me thank all of us for the contribution thank and thank distinguished uh, Senator Ethan Williams for bringing this to the fore. And I would like to put the question. Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, say aye. Those again, say nay. The ayes have it. The clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, the single senators, a bill for an act to provide for the establishment of Chartered Institute of Petroleum and Gas Engineers of Nigeria and for Related Matters 2024. SB 359, second reading. Distinguished colleagues, Chartered Institute of Petroleum and Gas Engineers of Nigeria Establishment Bill 2024, SB 359, second reading taken. A bill for an act to provide for the establishment of Chartered Institute of Petroleum and Gas Engineers of Nigeria and for later matters 2024. This bill is now 
referred to the Committee on Establishment and Public Services Matters to report back to the Senate within four weeks. Leader of the Senate, please approach. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, I rise at this point to move that the Senate goes into a closed door session to enable us to deal with some house clearing matters. I so move, Mr. President. Minority Leader. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I support the motion that the Senate goes into a closed session to discuss matters of national importance. This is so the The motion has been moved and seconded that this August Assembly do resolve into a closed door session to discuss matters of national urgent importance. Those in support of the motion say aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Gentlemen of the press will leave us briefly. We can go into a closed session now.